Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's as we celebrate the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. Please stand as you are able. Let's go. 
Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth is to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and trouble nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak. To win over the weak, I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I might preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure that many of you have noticed that it is rather cold outside today, rather cold outside this weekend. And again, to see temperatures back in the negatives is uh, breathtaking at times, quite literally. And yet, um, many of you know that I was in the military. I served in the Army. And what you may not know is that most of that time, I was stationed up in Alaska in Fairbanks at Fort Wainwright. And it gets very cold there in the winter as well. 
uh, we would have it would oftentimes week or more at a time where the high temperature for the day would not reach negative 30. Uh, most years you would see that temperature at least once get pretty close to minus 60 below. Again, this is without wind chill. And uh, it's rather cold. And being part of the Army, being part of the infantry, part of our assigned duties was to go out and train in some of that very cold weather. And I know um, the gear that we had was, you know, honestly very, very good. But there's always this understanding that if you're going to be out moving and training in the cold, you're likely going to be working up a sweat, even if it's very cold outside. So you can't have any kind of gear that is excessively warm. Otherwise, you will sweat too much. And then when you stop moving, you will freeze. So you are always, always a little bit cold. And you could never get away from it. It was always present, always with you. And I know going through those days and those trainings when we would be out, I, always what would be on my mind was waiting for that day to end when you could crawl into that warm uh, sleeping bag and at least be warm for a few hours before you had to get up and do it all over again. I think in some ways that's kind of what Job is experiencing in that first reading. He is talking about how man's life on earth seems this drudgery, and seems, again, to be nothing but bitterness, nothing but misery, constantly afflicted with this anguish of longing for something that never seems to come. And even at night, when he does go to rest in his bed, it says the night seems too long, the days seem too fleeting, and he worries that he will never see happiness again. This is part of that struggle. This is part of the human condition. This is something that likely many of us have experienced in one form or another throughout our lives, whether even it simply be dealing with the cold winter days. We know we desire something more. We desire that warmth. We desire that comfort. And we get some hints to this, uh, what the solution is in that gospel today. For this is a very different take on what Job is experiencing and is meant to draw us into this deeper relationship, this deeper understanding of how the Lord works in our lives. For we get that encounter with Jesus and how he brings healing and he brings salvation, he brings freedom from disease, from devils, from illnesses, from those things that plague us, those things which torment us in this life. And at the end of it, after probably a very long day, he still rises very early before dawn and he goes off to a deserted place to pray. I think it is so important for us who know some of those difficulties, some of the drudgeries of life or work or disease or weakness or whatever it might be, that we also take time to go out and pray. Even, again, after spending that busyness of a full day even if it means rising sometimes a little bit early, to have that dedicated time to prayer, to really set aside a quiet time to be with the Lord in meditation, in contemplation, in adoration of God and his presence and his working in our lives, that it might strengthen and renew us to see what God is doing in our lives, what God is doing for those around us. This is so essential, my brothers and sisters to reorient us, to focus us so we don't focus as much on the difficulties and the tasks, but that we can see beyond it to that hope of what is to come. And when Simon and those who are with him find Jesus, Simon says to him, everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. We all have a deep desire ingrained in our hearts to find the Lord. Just like in those cold winter days up in Alaska, my desire was for that sleeping bag at the end of the day. My desire was for that, that warmth, that comfort. It is a reflection of that deeper desire in us to experience the warmth and the comfort that we have in our Lord, that we have in God himself, that we have in that connection and that union to him in the faith in the sacraments in the church, 
My brothers and sisters, this is the desire. Everyone is looking for God. That's the solution. That is the answer to Job's struggle. That is the answer to his problem. For when we recognize the deeper desire in our heart, it brings hope. It brings meaning to that task. It brings meaning even to the suffering. Because we seek Jesus. We seek life, truth, goodness himself. My brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass again today, to this mystery of the sacrifice of this sacrament of the Eucharist, we encounter Jesus again. Body, blood, soul, and divinity present for you here. We seek him with a deep desire. And as we encounter him, as we find him, may he be the solution. May he be the answer to our struggles, to our weaknesses, to our questions, to our doubts. And that we find in him that peace and that perfection which answers all our struggles. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence that God hears and answers our prayers, we present these petitions to him. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely, the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all peoples of all the world, that the Lord may gracious, graciously preserve harmony among them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that all men and women would turn to Jesus with their whole hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the safety and protection of all who serve in the military and armed forces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the consecrated life, priesthood, and diaconate, and for all those preparing for marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Clarence Bukowski, Matthew Tomczyk, who passed away recently, may they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Join us in saying the prayer for our sister parish. Pray to God, God, you made made this world and saw that it was good. In your creation, you have gifted gifted us with many cultures. Through this diversity, there is much that you can teach us in our relationships with each other. Today, the Holy Spirit inspires us to new global connections with a message of love throughout the world. We ask that you continue to bless our sister parish relationship between Blessed Sacrament of Orient Kenya and the churches of St. Michael of St. Cloud and St. Joseph's of Way Park. We ask this to the one who united himself to the whole human race and who walks with us as we all go to you together, our brother and savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity 
made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile us to yourself, grant grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. 
surely that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. is for us. 
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. The announcement, St. Michael's Masquerade Silent Auction, is open for bidding today through 4.30 p.m. on February 27th. We have a great selection of auction items in the gathering space. Place your bids as you look through them all. Also, please return your sold and unsold tickets to the parish office before February 27th. Thank you for your support. Indeed, there are many uh, wonderful items out there, ranging in all sites for, from, again, dish towels to uh, a handmade violin. I almost wish I knew how to play the violin just so I could bid on that one. But again, uh, please spend some time, take a look at some of those options out there. Uh, write your name down with the bid as you are able. Uh, it does uh, truly help support uh, our parish, help support our community, uh, and continue to foster that community, what we can do uh, in these times. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. The hearts of your faithful submitted to your name entreat your help, O Lord. And since without you they can do nothing that is just, grant by your abundant mercy that they may both know what is right and receive all they need for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Praise be to God. I invite you to kneel down as we make our prayer to St. Joseph, or to, to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who call about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.